What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Bad Dog, back with another video. This one is a New York Yankee video. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Do me a favor when you click on this video. Smack that like button. It helps out the video more than you'll know. Hit the subscribe button to this channel. I'll be doing a lot more Yankee content next year for sure, no doubt about it. But any breaking news or anything that comes out with the Yankees this offseason, whether it be coaching changes, trades, uh, guys getting released, not coming back here, Gary Sanchez, um, any of that stuff, you know, I'll make a video on it. Uh, this happened today when I was working, so obviously a little bit delayed on this news. But the Yankees have fired Marcus Timms uh, and Phil Nevin. Uh, they also fired their assistant hitting coach, and his name escapes me at the moment. But obviously, these two are very important. Now, third base coach, um, you know, I kind of think of a third base coach like the offensive line of football. They're actually very important to what you do as far as offense goes and everything else. But um, unless they're not doing their job, nobody really notices them. And Phil Nevin this year had 22 New York Yankees thrown out of home plate, none bigger than the wild card game, sixth inning, uh, when John Carlos Stanton hit a rocket off the wall. He had Aaron Judge thrown out of home plate, and it wasn't close. I mean, the catcher was waiting for Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge was 10 to 15 feet away from home plate. They were like, took a perfect throw. No, it didn't. Uh, you have to know the ballpark. You have to know how hard the ball was hitting. You got to know the situation. Two outs, uh, I send him. He's, if he's out with two outs, oh well, because you know you you need a hit with two outs. You can't score in an out. Um, also, if you're up three to one and you want to be aggressive, I still don't like it, but okay, I can understand it. But when your offense hadn't done anything the entire game and you finally have a rally going, it looked like you were starting to get some momentum and you have them thrown out. The game was completely over at that point. So that was like the cherry on the Sunday as far as Phil Nevin go. He's had many Yankees thrown out uh, at home play during his tenure. Just really not a good third base coach at all if you take a look at it. Um, Marcus Timms, thank God. Uh, Bob Felicia, thank God. That he is, uh, he's gone. I, I've been screaming about Marcus Timms to get out of here for years now. I think the Yankees at home played of a terrible approach. It's an all or nothing approach. Um, you got to change something. Uh, there's no doubt about it. this team can't hit to save their life. There's many teams that strike out a lot, but they also hit for a higher average. They come through in big situations. They, they know how to hit in certain situations. They know how to do different things. Look no further than the Tampa Bay Rays, although they got knocked out against the Red Sox. Uh, this team won over 100 games. They're in the playoffs every year. They're winning the AL East, it seems, almost every year, and they do it with minimal payroll. There's a reason that they're able to do that. Hitting has a lot to do with it. I know what people are analytics. These analytical people love these long balls and the exit velo and the launch angle. At the end of the day, that doesn't win games. Hitting, timely hitting, situational hitting, that wins games. You know, fundamentals wins games. The Yankees don't hit as a fundamental unit. They haven't. This is why they have so many guys hitting around or under 200. It's ridiculous that there were lineups this year that we fielded that had five to six guys hitting under 200. Now, I'm not going to sit here and blame Marcus Timms for a guy like Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo is what he is. He's an all-or-nothing hitter. He strikes out a ton of times. But if it's possible, think about it. Joey Gallo is like a career 202 hitter, struck out like 45% of the time or 40% of the time. He got to the Yankees and he actually got worse. He got worse here. He struck out almost 60% of the bats or 50% of the bats, whatever it was. It was a lot more than his career strikeout rate, and he hit 150 here. So somehow a guy that had a career 202 average got here and hit worse. That tells you all you need to know. With a good hitting coach, you could see guys hitting over. You could see Aaron Judge getting over 300. He's right around. You could see John Carlos Stanton getting over 300. Maybe these guys will get better. They certainly can't get worse. Marcus Timms had to go. This team had fallen off. This team's production had fallen way down since 2017. Uh, I have no idea if Gary Sanchez would benefit from a new head coach. I don't want to find out. I'm really hoping I can do a video talking about how the Yankees let that guy walk. I'm sick and tired of it. I think they could pay him $8 million and keep him here. He's definitely not worth that. I don't want him. But again, that's a, that's a video for another day. Marcus Timms and Phil Nevin are gone. What does this mean for Aaron Boone? I want Aaron Boone gone too. I'm not alone in that thought. I know a lot of Yankee fans want Aaron Boone the hell out of here as well. Unfortunately, Yankee fans, I don't think it's going to happen. Hal Steinbrenner loves, he loves Aaron Boone. He's such a nice guy. But the fact that they're firing these guys, I think this is telling me that they're going to say, okay, 
Aaron, we're going to see if these guys were the problem and we're going to give you a new hitting coach, a new third base coach, a new assistant hitting coach, and who knows who else. I think Matt Blake stays. I think the Yankee pitching wasn't great, but what could you expect from it? Garrett Cole was a huge letdown. That's not Matt Blake's fault. I think that guys like Tyone uh, overachieved. Nestor Cortez overachieved. I think a lot of Yankee pitching staff overachieved, and the fact that the Yankees won all the games that they did it had a lot more to do with their pitching, to be completely honest with you, than their hitting. So I think Matt Blake deserves to stay on. I think he will. But we'll see about Aaron Boone. I have a bad feeling he's going to come back. Obviously, his contract is up. We'll see if the Yankees bring him back in a one-year deal. Like, I could see that. They get rid of they get rid of Nevin. They get rid of Marcus Timms. And they bring back Aaron Boone in a one-year prove-it deal, kind of saying, okay, were these guys really the problem? Is this the reason that the offense was really bad? Is it because of Marcus Timms? Is it because of Phil Nevin? And at the same time, I, I, we, we all know. Um, and a Yankee fan with half a brain knows Brian Cashman has a ton to do with what this team is. And I, I have a feeling that he will not be fired either. But I, I do believe that perhaps in 2022, both Aaron Boone and uh, Brian Cashman start the year on the hot seat. I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. These guys are not going to be here for extended period of time unless the Yankees change things. I know it's kind of funny, you know, we're, as Yankee fans are very spoiled, but it's not just Yankee fans, the media expects a lot more in New York and again it's because of their history which is I guess it's a good thing to have the history that the Yankees have but it's also a bad thing you're held to a different a standard you're held to a higher standard you're held to different expectations than everybody else in Major League Baseball but when you look at how much money the Yankees spend and all these guys and all the resources and year after year after year you're getting beat by Tampa Bay who has like a 30-year payroll um, and you can't get out of the wild card round, and you can't win the division, and you can't get past the ALCS anymore. It speaks volumes about how bad the GM is and how bad these contracts are and everything else. But I think that they're going to have one more year in 2022. And if the Yankees don't get out of this and at least show some improvement and get farther into at least get into the ALCS, uh, I think both of those guys have a chance to be gone. But I don't see it happening in 2022. I think Boone and Cashman will both be back here. But I can tell you this, Phil Nevin and Marcus Sims will not. So again, bye Felicia! That's all I got in this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you made this far, again, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe button. And hey, if you want to come by, I'll be live for the Lakers, 945 tonight. Hope to see you there. Bad diggity dizzle. Gone. Peace.